Hey, how you doing? I'm Elton, and this is a quick demo to show you a best practice .NET Core application deployed to Azure Kubernetes service using GitHub Actions, all generated for me using a Docker application template. So here we go. To get things started, I've already created a GitHub repo, but it's a completely empty repo. There's nothing there, not even a readme file. But what I do have is I have some secrets already set up. So inside here, I've configured secrets for my Azure service principle, some details for the Azure SQL database that I want to use, and my Docker Hub credentials. So the GitHub action can use all those things to create my AKS cluster and deploy my application to it. Now, if I look at the Azure portal, right now I don't have any resource groups with the name eShop, so there's nothing there at all right now because everything is going to be created for me by my Docker application template. So let's run that template. I've got Docker Enterprise Edition here with application templates installed. I'm going to click Design New Application and I'll maximize the screen. And I can choose a template for an already configured application. I'm running on Windows, so I get the choice of Linux or Windows. I'll choose Linux for my .NET Core app. And here's the template I'm going to run. It's the eShop on web demo application, which is on GitHub from the .NET architecture organization. I can run it locally using a SQL Server container, and I can also deploy it to Azure. So there are some settings I need to capture here. So I need to tell it the name of the GitHub repository I want to use, and that's my eShop web repo. I need to choose a name for my Azure resource group. So I'll call that eShop web two, and a name for my AKS cluster. And the template author here has specified what I can configure. So in this case, I can only choose a small cluster, two, three, or five nodes. This is the demo application, eShop web, and I can choose the port that I'm gonna run it on locally. And then for SQL Server, when I'm running it in my local container, I can choose to expose a port so I can access the database from the container and an administrator password. These don't get used in Azure. In Azure, this will all be generated for me. So I'll click on continue, give my application a name. So it's eShop web and click on scaffold. And what that's gonna do is each of those components that I've selected, they get run inside a container, which generates some output for me. So it takes the input parameters I provided, and it's gonna generate my source code for the demo application, a Docker Compose file so I can run it locally, and all the workflows for my GitHub Actions. So now that's all ready for me, I can click Run Application, and that will start the app locally in containers. So it will run me a .NET Core container for the web application and a SQL Server container. Now, while that's starting up, I can open Visual Studio Code and that will load all the output from the application template. So inside here, I've got the eShop web application with a readme file that tells me exactly what I need to do next. So let me switch to the preview view. And inside here, there are links showing me the Docker file, which is being used to compile my .NET Core application. And if I check that out, I can see there are some good best practices baked in here. So I'm separating out the .NET Restore and the .NET Publish stages to make the best use of Docker's cache. I'm running unit tests inside this multi-stage build. So if the publish stage fails or the test stage fails, I don't get an image at the end. The image build will stop. So I'll only get an image with my packaged application if everything's tested and working correctly. I've also got a Docker Compose file to run locally. That's gonna build my eShop web application and it's also gonna run SQL Server. And it injects a secret here from the file system which contains the database connection string. And this is just when I'm running locally. I've also got a Docker Compose file to run the application on Azure Kubernetes service. And in here, I'm still using a secret to get hold of the database connection string, but this is an external secret. So as part of the deployment with GitHub Actions, the SQL Server connection string gets created as a Kubernetes secret, and that will get loaded into my application at runtime. So the first thing I need to do is push my local repo up to GitHub, and that will run the first set of actions, which creates my SQL Server database and my Azure Kubernetes service. So now that's pushed, I can browse to my workflows and I can see my actions are running and they're gonna create my SQL Server databases and my AKS cluster. This is all being triggered from the workflows that are created from the template. So they are in my local source code up here to create my SQL database. And this just runs a container that uses the AZ command line behind the scenes and the same to create the AKS cluster. This is all using containers behind the scenes that use the AZ command line for me. Now it takes a little while for the AKS cluster to be up and running. So I'm gonna pause the video here and I'll come back when it's all ready to go. Okay, so my GitHub actions have all completed. So if I check back to my resource groups, I see I've now got an eShop web resource group. And inside here, I've got my AKS cluster. I've got my Azure SQL instance and I've got two SQL Server databases, all created by the GitHub actions. So let's switch back to the demo application and see what it actually does. 
So Application Designer is already running this locally and I can click on the link and here's my eShop on web. All the data comes from SQL Server, which gets seeded when the application starts and this is all running fine. The documentation here also tells me I can log on to my SQL Server container if, if I want to work with the data and it points out the key things that I should be interested in. So the Docker file we've already seen, the configuration setup uses a provider that loads a secret if the app's running in Kubernetes, and there are already health checks in the code that I could plug in and have Kubernetes test the health of the containers. Now the code is all in here, so I can open one of the files here, and now that I'm ready for deployment, I can say near the logo that we're running on Azure, and I can save this. And now if I restart the application, it will rebuild my container image with my application code in there, and it will restart my SQL Server container and my local eShop web container. So now that's running. If I refresh my local instance, I can see I've got my change. So now I'm ready to deploy. So back to the documentation. This tells me that all I need to do to deploy is to commit and push my changes. And that will kick off another GitHub action that takes the code and deploys it to AKS. I'll switch back to my GitHub repo, and check the code is there, which it is, and my action is running now. So my deploy to AKS action is running. And again, all the steps for the workflow were generated for me by the template. So in this case, the deploy to AKS template uses Docker Compose to build and push my images. It fetches the SQL Server connection string from my Azure SQL instance. Then it writes the connection string as a secret in Kubernetes and deploys my whole application as a Docker stack. See, as part of the deployment of the AKS cluster, the template also installed Compose on Kubernetes, which means I can use Docker Compose files to describe my application instead of the more verbose Kubernetes manifests. Okay, so the action takes a little while to run, but when it's done, I now have my stack running on Kubernetes in Azure, talking to an Azure SQL database. So back to the docs, and this tells me how to load my AKS dashboard. Now, even the documentation has been generated from the properties that I put into the application designer. So these are my details, and this will load my dashboard. So let's take that and launch my Cloud Shell. And I'll just paste this command, which launches my Kubernetes dashboard. And here the dashboard loads up. And I can see my application has been deployed. I've got my eShop web deployment with the pod running my .NET Core application. And if I scroll down here, I'll see there's been a secret created for my database connection string. The deployment also creates a load balancer service. So I can see the public IP address for my application. And if I browse here, I see the exact same application, but now it's running on the Azure Kubernetes service connecting to an Azure SQL database. And all that was generated from this one Docker application template that includes my .NET best practices and everything I need to get up and running with GitHub Actions and Azure Kubernetes service.